From me, Alan Biggs, a very warm welcome to the Ref Show. As ever, and this season it seems to have been a weekly occurrence, almost more controversy. For the second time in three weeks, the wrong man is sent off. And that wasn't all. But there are some good performances in the mix as well, and we'll highlight those on this programme. Mark Halsey and Keith Hackett uh, mm. in attendance, as they are regularly. Top line, though, I think. Let's go in on the new role at the top of PGMOL for Howard Webb, was technical director. Now he's select group performance director. Effectively, Keith, that means manager of the select group referees? Well, either he takes control and Riley goes into the background. I can hardly see that happening. So I think it's just the change of title. If, if Howard is willing to accept just the change of title and not actually be effective in the role that he's now got, then it's a complete waste of time. He needs to get all of these referees and he needs to actually manage them and they need some leadership. If Riley's not going to give it, he needs to give it. He's got all the strengths and power to be able to do that within his own makeup, providing he retains focus. I mean, what amazes me after this weekend that's just gone, this lot are going to get a plane next weekend and go to Dallas. Webb, Dunn, Allison, uh, and others, Riley, Riley, are all going to Dallas. Now, I know Dallas is a, like a grassroots competition. Fine. But the reality is, the way the referees are performing at the moment, the big mistakes that they're making, they needed to be in next weekend. It's an international weekend, no games. Get into a relaxed environment and let them do things that are enjoyable mm. and get some team spirit in to the organisation. The job. Just, just, just come in, just yeah. come in from now. I think, we'll look at I, the think I think what's what's happening here is that Howard's taking over the role what, which Kieran Barrett done. And and for me, you know, you've got to, I don't know what Keith thinks about this, but you've got to bin that evaluation system. It's mm. all whatever you do in sport or whatever you do, it's all about confidence. Mm. Bin the evaluation system let the referees go out and do what they're good at. Referee football matches. They still have the natural ability style come back. You know, yeah. it's all about confidence. Assuming Howard is given his head and is properly managing the select group referees, that's really, Keith, what you and what you and you are the ref general have been calling for, isn't it? Absolutely. I have no question that Howard has got yeah. all the skill sets required to pass on his expertise, as I did with some of the referees whilst I was there. Howard's got a greater experience with having done the World Cup. So he can actually mm. put that in mm. and get over these problems. But what he's got to do is he's got to get off the van mm. and stop the media bit mm. and get into the grounds and see the referees. Mm. And he's got a big problem ahead of him. It's not going to happen overnight, this, mm. because as I'm looking at it, their six succession planning is not working. And so if I'm saying, like several others are saying, I think, we need six or more referees to come onto the onto the list. Mm. Problem. But, Where are they? But I don't think he's not going to work miracles with this squad, is he? No, you you no. use the words. It's not no. going to happen overnight. But I mean, he's no. like a new football manager taking but, over. Needs but, time. But let's he? not what? forget, Alan. We've got we've got some really good referees out there. Yeah. Okay, really good referees on the select group. It's the way you manage them. It's the way you mm. manage. It's all about managing men and getting them working for you. Just like you say, yeah. just like a, a manager does. How would, it's about motivation. How got the personality and skills to do oh, that? I, I, I think. Well, the difficulty Howard faces is you can't be one of the boys. No, that's, mm. that's you've got to you've got to move aside. You can mm. you know you've got to almost mm. be in a separate room at times yeah. to have your own thoughts, mm. your own counsel. And you then didn't going. have that problem because it was a long distance from your career, wasn't there, Keith? When you, when yeah, you took and, but, and, and I think that was a problem to Mike Riley. But yeah. what is interesting is that, you know, that's not been a problem from Pete Walton. Mm. He's gone across, straight out of being a select group referee, straight into the MLS, different country, different number of match officials, and done a terrific job. Yeah. So it can be done. He, he, he can. I mean, Howe was a very likable person. You know, yeah. he's, he's good mm. with people. Now, from Mike Riley's point of view, there he's still, he's still general manager. I mean, yeah. Keith, is this a, sort of a sidestep uh, out of the firing line? or? No. Well, you know, his background is an accountant. Mm. He's a bead counter. Let him, let him deal with the statistics. Mm. Let him put forward those. Stay and keep them clear of refereeing. 
They don't need to know that. The, what they need to know is how did they perform minute by minute during a game, like we run in ref camp, yeah. assessments and other performances. It's about personality. He did appear to defend the indefensible at times. Wouldn't it be better if he came out and said, look, this has been a season of errors, of unacceptable le level of errors, and all of us here are, are attempting to do something about it. I mean, Let Jim us... Boyce at FIFA, for instance, well, has made I, this I mean, I mean, Jim It's not Boyce... just us here. Well, uh, you are the ref, is well, it? We're we've, not... been, we've been saying it, but, yeah. you know, this guy, Jim Boyce, he's like top dog. He's the guy that's chairman of the referees committee... FIFA. ..and FIFA, and delivered an outstanding set of performances refereeing in the last mm. World Cup. So this guy is, is, is a genuine referees guy, and he's said it. And, he's, it. and when he says it, somebody's got to go sit up and listen and, to and, that. And part. not be pointing the finger at ex-referees who, who are being critical, which seems to have <laughs> yeah. been uh, the way. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, if, I mean look, it, it is, it, it's remarkable, almost unbelievable that a, an elite referee, a very experienced referee, in a Premier League game can go out and have in front of him a very easy decision. Let's not complicate okay. denial of an obvious goal-scoring opportunity. So we're talking say, here about well, Manchester City, yeah. West Brom, Neil Swarbrick and yeah. the wrong player centre. Yeah, well, let's not... You know, the, the, the discussion was, well, he's got five things to think about and all that. Hey, come on, we do things naturally. We knew instantly that that's denial the player's got to go, and what you do is you follow it. As you're following it, you're saying, don't foul, don't foul, don't foul. It's red, it's red, it's red. Bang, foul, it's red. You go up with a red card, 25's off. You don't have this confusion. What and can, this is a lack of confidence, I think. What can referees do, younger referees watching, experienced referees watching, what can they do to avoid that happening? You've got to be switched on. You've mm. got to be mentally focused, mentally in tune, with the game, you know, you've got to anticipate play. You've got to um, read the play, what, what, what's happening around you. And I, I was at the game. I was at I was at the Etihad on, on Saturday. And the first thing I noticed about Neil 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 Swarbrick was any young referee that's watching this show, he's kicked off, okay. And then what is what Neil Swarbrick's doing then is he's running around, ten first ten seconds. He's going like this, so he's not watching play. He's going like this, fiddling with his watches. Mm. Now. If you're doing that, you're not switched on straight away. Mm. So, you know, start your watch five seconds before you kick off. Before you mm. kick off. And then he's not switched on. All of a sudden, in the first minute, just over five minutes, something happens. He's back on his heels. He's back yeah. on his heels, OK? Yeah. So he's, he's, he's five, five to ten yards behind play where he should have been. If he's anticipating play, reading play, mm. he's five to ten yards forward, and you follow that play. I mean, he's had, a, like Keith said, he's had a great view. He's got number yeah. 25 on his back. And what you do is you, you're thinking, you think, if he fouls, if he fouls, it's a foul, it's a red card because it's denial. So mm. that's all going through your head. And as soon as you blow that whistle, mm. you run straight to the player. You head a, a beeline to that player with your red card coming out straight yeah. away. And then, then everybody knows, and, 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 and Dawson knows. Yeah. But what, what happened there was, Neil deviated from his, his, part, his straight path. He deviated, and then what he's done then, he's got a little bit confused, he's mm. lost his focus, he's lost his concentration, mm -hmm. and then he's, he's, got, he's got the wrong Well, way. he's been criticised, and obviously rightly, for getting that wrong, yeah. and he's also for, for City's second goal, which I think you feel should have been disallowed for a foul. But you've got something positive, I know, to say about your yeah, sport. Yeah, I have. I mean... Normally, you're told not to speak to the media at half-time. So, obviously, I think Neil has. And, and you know, you're not allowed to. So, it's, it's a protocol where you're not allowed to. But I think it was right what he'd done to let everybody yeah. know he's made a mistake. And I saw with Neil's body language, when he came out at half-time, he was devastated. He was absolutely devastated. So, and to go out and referee the second half in the manner he did... I think yeah. we've got to applaud him because Absolutely, some, some yeah. referees would just go to pieces. Neil Swarbrick didn't, and I thought he had a really good 45 minutes. Showed some bottle. So well Real done bottle. to Neil. Well done also, I think, Michael Oliver. Now, you covered this game on RefCam, which was hold to Chelsea mm. 3, Mark, and you were absolutely glowing with praise for his performance. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was pleasing to, 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 to watch Michael. I thought the way he, he managed to get... He obviously came... He, switched, he was switched on from the, from the word go. He yeah. played a lovely advantage for, for Chelsea's first goal, and that tells me he was mentally in tune with the game, the way he managed the players, the way he managed the game, managed the event, and the way he just his old demeanor, demeanor, and his body language 
was I thought was absolutely first class. Can we just whiz through a few now? Um, because there was <coughs> there were some good performances, some uneventful games as well. I know you can do anything with figures, but across the Premier League, there were just apart outside of the sendings off, there were only twenty uh, yellow cards, which is a, yeah, a, a big reduction. There were remarkably no yellow cards at all uh, in three of the games. Aston Villa nil, Swansea one, Robert Madley, Newcastle one, Arsenal two, Mike Jones, and Southampton and uh, Burnley with. Roger East, that uh, said, I think uh, Burnley had a good case for a penalty there, uh, Keith. Mm, by all counts. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I mean, th I mean, all the evidence was where the way Fonse has gone sliding in. When you go, when you go to the ground in the penalty area, you run the risk, and you're asking questions of the referee. So I, 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 I was surprised that a penalty kick wasn't given. But going on right. to, the, to the yellow cards, obviously, the people and the referees must be watching this show because we we go on about recognition, yeah. foul, non-foul, careless and reckless, and. Uh, well done, referees. OK, mm. Crystal Palace and Stoke. Uh, Palace winning 2-1 two, two, at Stoke. It was Andre Mariner. Uh, some debatable ones there. Mark Hughes said the penalty that Palace had for the equaliser was harsh. Also, should have been another pen in that game, shouldn't there? Well, yes. I think first one. Let's just talk about the first, first one. one. This is when the forward went goes in. Balassi on the goalkeeper. Went in goal with his foot erased. Yes. Yes. So I'm expecting that to be a free kick yes. to the defensive team. Yeah. Yes. And in fact, surprised then he awarded the yeah. penalty kick. I yes. think he got that wrong. Or, okay. or do not, or do nothing. Or do nothing. Or do nothing and play on and yeah. no, one, no one argues. Yes. West, but the second, obviously the second one, the penalty was, was a blatant handball by Ward. Right. Correct. On, on to Lee well, Mason's he was a goalkeeper, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Lee Mason's game, uh, Sunderland losing 1-0 at uh, West Ham. A couple of penalty uh, claims. Uh, good, good ones for for the hammers there, and maybe the Sarko goal was a question mark. As yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I mean, I think if you look at Lee's Ma Mason's positioning on on two of the the big key matches, I think we're, we're we're totally wrong. He was too far detached from play. He was he was just he was too far left of the penalty area. And he should have been more over. I mean, and obviously he, he could have helped his assistant on the first one because the, the 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 cross into the box came from a flick on from John O'Shea, which we can clearly see. Kevin Nolan was held. Should have been a penalty kick. And a, and a red card, and the assistant's flag for offside there. If Lee Mason would have been in a good position, he could have helped his assistant there, and the right decision would have come. But and it's the same with the, with the with the foul. I thought it was a foul on Larson. I've got I've got to say, and once again, Lee Mason wasn't in the correct position. Right, the big you know, game. This, guy, this guy's been at it for, yeah. for yeah. a long time now on the Premier League. Yeah, he ought to. You know, this mm. ought to be bread and butter to him. Yeah. He ought to be comfortable putting in the performances. Well, let's move on to the big game. Martin Atkinson earned some praise for Liverpool 1, Manchester United 2. Gerrard sent off. No argument. Skirtle and Jones, though, were they lucky not to? Well, 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 well yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, I just want to go back to, I mean, I thought Martin did well. I mean, they're massive games and they're very hard to control. So, oh, no, I thought Martin done, done very well. I thought he refereed it well. I mean, let's, let's just go back to the Stephen Gerrard incident. Um, I, I mean, I think that Martin could have just handled that a little bit better because just, just seconds before that, Stephen Gerrard's coming with a, a, a reckless challenge, in my opinion. I think, yeah. I think Martin could have just nailed that goal. He'd give a free kick. Didn't necessarily not caution him, on yeah. the matter. Talk to him, set him down. Because you can tell by his body language, he wasn't happy that he'd been Nipped left it, out. But also, let's give Stephen Charles some praise because, for me, it looked like Stephen Charles came in and, and advised Martin Atkinson that it was, a, it was a definite red card and a clear stamp, and you yeah. could see that. Mm. OK. And, my, but, going, but going on to... Yeah. The Jones challenge, yes. I mean, you, you, I mean, Jones could have no complaints if Martin would have showed a red card there, and, yeah. and Martin chose yellow. And obviously, he, you know, the stamp is very difficult to see that. Okay. Mike, Do Mike Dean has earned high marks in this studio. There, there, was, there was a talking point or two: Spurs four, Leicester three. But let, let's move on. Can we move on to the the championship? Uh, because <laughs> there have been two huge talk. Well, more than two huge talk, talking points. First of all, I'm going to go to Bournemouth, Cardiff. This was last week, and a, a goal <coughs> incorrectly disallowed by it. This was Lee Mason. Uh, Callum Again. Wilson's goal. Goalkeeper kicks it. He's several yards away. And well, let, let, let's, let's first of all look the, at law. The, the, yeah. the, the fact is that um, one, this particular attacking player has his yeah. back to the goalkeeper yes. and he's standing outside the penalty area. Right. Moving away. Yeah. Uh, if he'd been facing the goalkeeper, raised his foot, one could say, right, fine, there's a reason for giving a free kick. Yeah. There was no reason for giving a free kick. In law, the referee's got it completely wrong. 
the goal should have been allowed, okay. without question. Well, that's getting a lot of hits on, on, right. on the internet. But one that probably won't, because uh, it had less coverage, Richard Clark was in charge of the game I was at, uh, Huddersfield and Fulham. Extraordinary uh, incident uh, in that one. Absolute mayhem. He was persuaded <laughs> to award a penalty, because I don't think he saw handball on the line. Penalty <clears> for Huddersfield. Huddersfield players crowded around. He reacted by awarding the kick, but he's then got to work out who's exactly. handled it. Yeah. He's got to yeah. send yeah. somebody off. Denial of an obvious score. Well, and he, he, he sends a guy off who's obviously innocent and then has to show a second red card to the guy who actually did it. So he got there in the, in end. the end and brought the, the wronged player back. Well, that's what we were on. saying earlier about with Neil Swarbrick. It, it's so important at any level, you know, you've got to stay focused, mentally focused, and your concentration levels have got to be at the highest. And listen, yeah, the, the people go on about he's, you know, he's got the wrong, he's got the wrong player. But in the end, he right, did get there. In the end, it don't matter how you get there, long as you make the right decision. There's been and a that, lot and of that's referees lately listening to player reaction, and is that entirely right or advisable, Keith? Well, I think the first thing is that the referee shouldn't be put in that position. So it's down to the referee. Mm -hmm. He should have been positioned, right, and he should have the confidence that he's seen. And he's yeah. going to act correctly. I think if, the fourth if official he's get, in on this. Well, it, then I'd be saying That's to right. the fourth official, who's going? And if the fourth official says, I don't know, then nobody's going. I'll give the right. penalty kick, yeah. Yeah. but I won't send anybody off because on a say-so. Sure. Yeah. 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 So rather than jump in and, and make that first error and guess, which he's done, yeah. <clears throat> best to say and admit afterwards... Yeah. Didn't yeah. identify the player. Yeah. That's why I didn't get sent right. But <laughs> Keith makes a great point. You know, for any any young referee out there, do not guess. Never guess. No. Never no. guess. It's a good light. It's a great way to finish, Keith. Mark, thanks ever so much. We could have got on forever on this one. So much yeah. happening at the moment. Thanks for joining us on the Ref Show. If you've got any points to raise, do get in touch with us. At you are the Ref. Dot com. Meantime, I think we all need a breather. There's an international break coming up. So we'll see you again on The Ref Show in a fortnight. See you then. Bye.